can't know the name of the players without a scorecard, <laughs> without a program. What is it they used to say at the ball? Okay, at the ball field, 566. Is that right? Yeah, 506, 66. That's a high number for those of you who are counting. Broken color. Exclamation point, exclamation point. All right. Hello, friends. Thank you for joining me again today. Whoops. Let me put that chalk back in this little Ziploc bag or it'll be lost forever. All right. Let's get legal. <laughs> Daily Art Adventure number 566. <laughs> Broken color. Yahoo. Um, it's Yahoo because this is the final stage, the official final step, final stage of the painting process. Woohoo! So in the last little while, if you were, some of you saw this morning or this afternoon, early this afternoon, um, basically what I've done since I left you, whoops, and I have to turn you up just a second, hang on a second, there we go, um, is I finished that sign up there and I, I think I'm happy with it. Um, of course, I reserve the right to come back and second guess anything. Uh, second guessing or painting a longer time on a painting is okay as long as that longer time does not, are you, you hearing me? As long as it does not translate, hi Harold, good to see you again. As long as it does not translate into tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. And I've talked about that quite a bit, so I won't beat that horse anymore. Nay. <laughs> so I'm into a broken color. That means same value as what's already there, but different color. Oh, but you know what? <laughs> I just saw my eyes just fell on. Probably what, how I'm going to finish this painting tomorrow, I hope, will actually be the way a builder, a uh, home builder, finishes a home. And uh, Harold, you can tell me if this is right, is with a punch list. The, the last thing you do, somebody go those through. If you're the builder, you go through. And you just start writing things down and you put one of those orange, yellow, or blue dots on everything. That's what I'll do last. Well, this was part of my punch list and I just missed it. And that is to uh, blueify, <laughs> to make this rear, rear, uh, there, that's better. While I've got this on my brushes, though, a, a dull, medium, dark blue, um, I also realized that I do want to put some color in this woman's legs. Now the question is, is she wearing a skirt or is she wearing jeans? Nah. <sighs> yeah, I think I'll go with jeans all the way down, so to speak. I don't know, not jeans, but it doesn't have to be jeans, but dark. But I'll leave his legs black, I think. Likewise, just a touch of blue. So what I'm doing right now is actually not broken color, so forgive me. It's uh, and let me look at my the photograph. It's actually what I'm doing right now is um, light bits, which makes it, which ma which makes it um, broken values. Okay, broken values means the the painting that this area of the painting is a certain color, and um, you make you make a light or a dark mark on top. That's broken value. Now, here's another, this is another punch list item. So once again, I'm not, I'm not into, <laughs> I'm actually not into the broken, broken color yet. Um, uh, I achieved the, the value that I wanted. I think, I think that I want, want on this, on these distant hills. Um, but I achieved it by scumbling. Okay, that means, that means opaque paint applied very thinly. That's scumbling. Um, and as you've heard me say, maybe many times, scumbling is legal, but it's not a pleasant final um, look. So uh, now I'm coming with a little bit. I know you can't see that. I can see it here but I've, I've just applied some slightly heavier, thicker paint and I'm not done yet. I'm gonna, now I'm gonna do the sky. I'm doing dark first. Um, 
I, I'm going to paint at the horizon, so I'm trying to match the color that's already there. Let's see where I am. Ooh, very close. Good job. So now I'm not scumbling. Now I'm doing what you could call real painting. That is putting paint onto the canvas that can paint that can be seen as paint that can be sense it's not it's not exactly thick but it's thicker than what was there does that make sense um all right that's enough for now now let's get back perhaps to some broken color and i don't know where i'm going to start first at this point in my career and i could easily imagine getting much better at this i've, I've been doing this distinct broken color phase um i think for about six months so which means i'm still kind of new at it um and i'm going to do what i often do at least at this stage in my evolution I'm going to start with purple. I do find that in my broken color, I tend to favor the secondary colors, purple, orange, and green. Primary colors, red, yellow, blue. Secondary colors, there's three of them, right in between those three, which are orange, yellow, and orange, <laughs> purple, and green. <laughs> yes, I know my colors. Um, so I'm mixing up right now a fairly intense, I'm trying, I'm trying to be brave here. <laughs> Fairly intense violet, purple, nice, nice violet. That's a little bit too bright, but I'm going to leave it. Um, here, there's this is the right value. There we go. Now, one of the things that I realized uh, when, I don't know, last night, uh, in the middle of the night, as I was asking the cosmos <laughs> for, <laughs> wink, wink, for how to be a better painter, one of the things I sensed was more courage, be more brave, be more brave. Oh man, come on. One of the, I, as I'm teaching, and, and it's an echo of what I say to my students all the time, when I'm teaching a live art class and I come up and I do something wild and crazy on my, on my students' canvas, with their permission, of course, I often say the, the, the only difference between me and you right then was I was braver than you. So then last night, as I was trying to figure out how to be a better painter, I, I had the echo come back to me. Okay, smarty pants, you need to be braver. What? <laughs> um, and one of the things I realized, too, was that um, up until now, I have tended, with my broken color face, for it to be slightly punctiliar, pointed, dots. And I realized, oh, wait a minute, like right here. I can do a zone, uh, soft edges of, of color uh, to, to great effect. It doesn't have to be dots of color. Now, I've tended to be a little bit dotty in my broken color, so I'm hoping to correct that, remedy that right here today by doing zones of areas of color. And right now, of course, I'm doing purple. I find purple violet, purple violet is, is a very, uh, helpful um broken color purple itself in specific because it's it's very dark and um in a sense fits in anywhere that's an exaggeration but not not a bad one now i'm going to leave purple here shortly even though i feel like i could go on and do more but don't forget, I've got five more colors to go. And that's just if I do primary, secondary. You understand? It's really way more than five, you know, six. Uh, way more than six. Primary and secondary is a total number of six. But anyway, there's purple. Now, which way? I can go either way around the color wheel. I can go from purple, red way around. Or I can go purple, blue way around. Which way do I want to go? Uh, for some reason, I want to go bluish. So there we go. I'm mixing up then some, and I'll do more than one blue. Uh, like I'll do one, a purplish blue. That means ultramarine and also uh, using dirty brushes that still had purple in them.
All right, so I've got a nice, cool blue. Um, and where can I, and it doesn't have to be dots, as I just said, it can be soft edges and some hard edges. There, that's nice. A little bit on that man, just a one touch. Yeah. Um, this doorway. Now that, that is not quite, what I just did is not broken color. I don't know if you can see that or not. That's a little too intense. That actually constitutes, no, I'm not erasing it. I'm just pushing it back. Um, that constitutes broken value because it was considerably lighter than the area around it. So that's not, that is, don't be confused. It has to be the same value, the same lightness, darkness to qualify as broken color. get my step stool. I have two ladders here. One is a real ladder and the other is just a two-step stool. I'm going to go up here a little bit. I'm doing blue, which is showing up quite nicely. Um, blue, more ultramarine. Oh, I really like the idea of making this pole. Right now it's just a neutral, dark, black color and I, I don't want it to stay that color. So I don't want it to stay neutral, that is. Way back here, a little Touches of blue would be a good idea. It makes sense logically even because of aerial perspective. Things would be bluish, not this dark. Okay, I'm going to go around the color wheel a little bit further now. Picked up some phthalo blue. So uh, much more intense sky bluish. And I'm going to go ahead and mix up a batch that's quite a bit lighter than what I've been doing. And where do I want to put it? So I'm... Okay, this sign, for instance, is um, about the same value. Can you see what I'm doing there? It's, it's the same value as what I have on my brush. So this is a, a good, and again, not be careful not to be too careful. There, that's nice. Just it was it was a moment ago. It was sort of all the same color. Now it's got some, kind of a funky. <laughs> Hard to explain exactly how that could happen, but it looks nice. Again, this this uh, broken color is, unless, of course, unless you're thinking truly in, in an academic sense, like the, unless you're thinking like the impressionist Claude Monet, unless you're thinking like them, what I'm doing right here is not increasing, I'm not trying to make it more Realistic. In other words, I'm not looking at my photograph over here and saying, oh, there's a little bit of blue in there. That is not what I'm doing. Does that make sense? Um, now, if, if you do the academic, truly academic uh, Claude Monet impressionistic thing, see, they would say, no, no, no. In actuality, all these colors are uh, what they, jumbled in. Uh, you just, most people don't notice them. Okay, that's so granted. Um, that's not exactly what I'm doing. I'm, I'm not trying to increase realism here. I'm trying to increase uh, interest, visual interest. And I like that mark I just made. It was just a little bit too much of a good thing. Ooh, a little bit of blue on this man crossing the road, which means I'm bringing him forward a little bit, right? And I liked the fact that he was so subtle, but he's still subtle enough. Um, but now there's a variety of colors on him that's more pleasant. Likewise, some blue on the windshield of these cars. Now with this particular stroke, I actually am increasing similitude or increasing realism. The most prominent uh, color on a, on, a, on a field of cars. When we look at cars, 
from a distance. The most prominent color is the reflection of the sky. And of course, the sky here is quite blue, so I just added a bunch of blue to um, those cars, and they're all now slightly more realistic. That's nice. Nice trade-off. Oh, there's a bold mark. All right, I'm going to move on. I didn't really need to clean my rushes there, did I? I did it anyway. Um, around the color wheel. So we uh, went from purple to blue, cool blue to warm blue, now to green, right? So I'm just going to pick up some um, cool yellow. There is such a thing as there's cool yellow and warm yellow, right? Warm yellow is orange yellow. Cool yellow is cat yellow, light, Hansa yellow, lemon yellow, any of those. The real, real bright yellows. They're very cool, very close to green. And I, in fact, I tell students all the time, until you become an authentic colorist and you can really you understand color, you should, until you reach that point, whatever, you can declare yourself to reach it at any point. But until you reach that point, you should consider the light yellows to be a green. Don't think of it as a yellow. Think of it as a green. You'll save yourself all kinds of horrible mistakes. <laughs> that was nice. Top of that, top of that car right there. That was a that was a perfect example of broken, of broken color. Uh, 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 yeah, broken color. Same value, same value as what was already there. I just shifted the color a little bit and our brain our mind still reads it as you know the top of a car that's the thing you can throw almost any color in anywhere and as long as it agrees matches the value that's already there that that is not that is way too way too light i'm actually going to erase that one okay so i'm looking for lighter bits ah i know up here and it doesn't they don't have to be hard edges they can be soft There we go, a little hint of uh, green in that light there. A little up here too. Um, I can imagine myself coming to the point, I'm gonna do a little bit of broken value right here, by the way. I just think it's gonna look good. I'm doing a green highlight on that lamppost. Um, I can imagine that as I mature as an artist, that I maybe get to the point that I can incorporate this step right here into, you know, the previous steps. It, it doesn't have to be a separate step. Um, but I'm not there now. And until I get there, it just makes sense then to treat it as a separate step and i am am totally fine. okay wait a minute wait a minute way down here at the bottom of the painting it's all orange right orange brown let me point you there okay so and i i should have come down here with the purple and the the purple and the uh blue but i didn't so better late than never I was going to say that even though in the future uh, I can imagine getting to the point that I can do this in one step instead of as a separate step, until that day comes, it's a good idea for me to do it as a separate step. Same thing with, uh, with the fuzz layer. Um, I'm, I'm assuming that those of you, if you're a newcomer, you don't know what the fuzz layer is, then just keep watching or go back in my archives and I do, you'll, you'll, you do a search if you want to find me do fuzz layer um all right that's enough green down there i'm done with green i'm going to go on around the color wheel then uh yellow is next now <laughs> is there any place in this painting that needs yellow 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 there may not be but tell you what before i just make that sort of dumb decision in other words i'm gonna this is crazy i hardly ever use pure I don't know what this is. Hansa yellow, lemon yellow, cad yellow light. I don't use cads, but a cad imitation is fine. So there we go. I have a very pale, cold, freezing cold yellow on here. And is there any place on this painting that is a very bright color already that I can 
introduce this wild and well first of all yes right here in the in some of these lights oh i'm sorry i keep interrupting myself so i was going to say <laughs> um what a a difference this this i'm putting very little paint on the canvas right i mean the canvas is huge and the the amount of of the canvas the percentage that is getting these little bits of color is so minuscule you know probably less than one percent of the canvas but it is such a uh dynamic one percent it makes such a difference in a uh, I the first time or the first couple times that I tried this technique where I had a distinct and separate color color break uh, broken color layer when I stand back from the canvas after just 10 minutes or 15 minutes of doing this I it almost takes my breath away it's like oh my goodness what a difference um these these little little bits make all right that's it i'm i'm that's a crazy color now i'm gonna just darken it up warm it up quite a bit and i'm going to a distinctly warm yellow warm yellow means yellow orange I mean, we've talked about this quite a bit what is the warmest color on the color wheel let me first of all let me back up there's three primary colors right red yellow blue two of them are warm one of them is cool you know think about it because it's warm and cool. And again, we are not talking physics here. We're talking visual. Because um, someone from physics class might come in and say, no, ultraviolet is actually the coolest color, blah, 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 in, a, in, a, in, you know, in outer space kind of sense of the word. But that's not, that's not what we're talking about. Uh, so make sure you're, you're not confused about that. Um, so there's two cools sorry two warms yellow and red and one cool blue so are red, yellow and red equally warm not quite yellow is ever so slightly warmer than red the warmest i'll just jump to the chase the warmest warm color is yellow orange there's there's yellow and red right in the middle of that is orange if you only have primary and secondary colors the warmest color is orange but if you have a full sensitive color wheel Take the orange and tip it just a tiny bit toward yellow and yellow orange, in my opinion, is the warmest of warm colors. And that helps explain how there can be such a thing as a cool yellow and a cool um, red and a warm blue, right? So to some of you, those are like oxymoronic statements. You're saying, no, there's no such thing as a no such thing as a warm blue no such thing as a cool yellow but i believe you're wrong once you get established exactly where the warmest color is it's yellow orange then that's your true north and your true south is purplish blue and and then all the colors if it gets goes this way it's warmer if it goes this way it's cooler so in the red zone i'll put red over here if it goes toward yellow orange that's a warm red if it goes toward purple it's a cool red all right now why was i saying all that i'm not sure but anyway i have here a oh i know it's because i have a a warmer yellow that's what i was talking about on my brushes and with some of what i'm doing here i confess is in fact like right there that's a that was a broken a bit of broken uh, value it was a punch of light whoops i'm sorry i was off camera Sorry about that. It was right there, that bit right there, that spot right there. If I want, okay, let's go back down here to the bottom now. So I have, I have now, um, hi, Susan, good to have you on board. This is going to be, I hope, a short broadcast. Well, I need to leave here in about less than an hour to go teach an art class. And I'm going to try again to broadcast tonight's class. I'm teaching a landscape, a real quick three hour landscape painting class at Jerry's Artorama at the store. And again, I'm going to try to broadcast it. I've had technical difficulties often when I try to broadcast from the store, but hope springs eternal. I'm going to try it again. 
Okay, so down here I'm looking for little bits that are the same value as this medium warm yellow that, that is on my brush right now. And again, I, it, I don't have to put down dots of broken color. I can put down little messy areas as well. Ooh, that was a good mark right there. I'm going to continue then around the color wheel. I'm going to add more orange to this mixture. So now I have a yellow orange, distinct yellow orange on my brushes. And it's a little bit darker than I had just a minute ago. I think it's about the same color as that. Yeah. Uh, same color as this bumper. Close enough. See, my brain gravitates so strongly toward broken values that it, it, this is still kind of a challenge for me to do broken color because my, my main mind so much wants to insert um, bits of broken value. That, that's sort of my, my stock in trade, if you will. It, it, that's because if you watch me, you've heard me say the most important aspect of a painting is play of light that means light and dark and so that's the way I paint I, I, my, I I'm drawn to intense color con uh, intense value contrast so even while I'm trying to do uh, broken uh, color like right now I'm violating that was a that was a rule breaker right there that was a little bit of broken value I like it so I'm gonna leave it but that is not broken color that's that's broken value Am I clear as mud? Broken value is when you're putting down a color that is either considerably lighter or considerably darker than what's already there. Broken value, I mean broken light, wrong. Broken color is when it's the same value but a different color. Okay, now that, that was a successful bit of broken color right there. And again, it doesn't have to be a, a, a punctiliary. It doesn't have to be a spot of color. It can be like a digit right there. It can be um, a little bit of um, fuzziness. Pardon me just a minute. All right. All right. I've got a lovely pale orange on my brushes that means I should be looking for some part of the painting that is not orange good here's a good spot right there there we go that was nice maybe on this guy's shirt jacket whatever it's a pale blue yeah just rub it out a little bit ah how about there we go on this part of this car likewise I'm starting to get happy. <laughs> You'll be glad to know. Now that's broken value. And I'm, I give myself permission to do that, but I try to make, make it clear in my mind that, oh, that's not, that's not the current mission. The current challenge, let's be bold here. The orange on top of green. Let's try that again. Too dark. Okay, let me move further out in that glow there we go there we go and again as i get better at this it's conceivable likely that i should be able to do more of this in the regular painting process but until i am there until i'm there i'm not there and uh, so i i will do a, a distinct and separate broken colored phase until I can incorporate it. By the way, I had this experience, a similar experience to that, to this, um, uh, last Thursday night, a week ago from tonight. Um, I did, and I've posted it on my, on my, uh, YouTube community page. I did at a middle school here in Raleigh. And I think that's the seventh time I've painted at a school in Raleigh. I have a special rate that I charge 
schools making a pretty good deal, but not such a good deal that I'm starving myself. Anyway, I did a 30 by, no, 40 by 60 inch painting in three hours. Think about it, 40 by 60 in three hours. And um, I am frankly quite proud of that painting. Um, I think it's one of the best fast paintings I've ever done. In fact, I did the math, that's 13 and a third square inches per minute. <laughs> 2,400 square inches in in uh, 1,800 minutes. Anyway, I, I realized as I was painting last Thursday that I did not have time for a separate and distinct uh, fuzz layer. So I simply was careful to do the fuzz. Now this is not broken color here. This is slight broken value. There we go. Same thing down here. Um, and I was, point being, I was quite happy with the process. When I'm painting that fast, I don't have time to do as many layers, as many stages. So I just incorporated it in, and it worked quite well. All right, that's enough of the yellow orange. Let's continue around the color wheel. I really did not need to rinse those brushes. Habit, bad habit. Uh, let's continue now to um, orange orange, perhaps even a red or red orange but definitely a diff slightly more intense dark orange than what I was just using a moment ago. And I have no idea where I'm going to use this. But that was a good guess. Am I on the, oh, I'm barely on the screen. Hey guys, it's nice comments here. Let me see what you're doing. Ah, uh, good thinker, 888. Are you using any medium? Yeah, slightly. I, it, I'm in the opaque phase of painting still. Uh, so the, the rule is, so to speak, the rule is no medium because it's opaque. But in fact, I do use a tiny bit of liquid just to help the paint flow a little bit better. Um, I don't want to have to wrestle with the paint to get it to spread. Good question there. Nancy Smitherman, good to hear from you again. Looking even better, it's getting there. Create a girl of color <laughs> with Danielle B. <laughs> hey girls, thank you for joining me. <laughs> and hey everybody. Okay, now I'm um, again, what I'm doing right now is not really broken value, broken color, it's broken value because it's quite a bit lighter. But all of a sudden I just looked up and said, you know what? That area right there would be helped with a little bit of lighter uh, orange in it. It's, it's such a faint orange that it, it, it comes almost across as just brown. It has a little bit of glow to it. So again, what I just did there was not technically broken color, but it looks nice. So, I'm, so leave me alone. <laughs> just kidding. Now this is broken color. So I did blue up here a little while ago and I'm doing some orange right on top of the blue. That's crazy. And this is broken value up there. You might be off the screen, yeah, sorry, off the screen. Um, so I started with purple and I'm around, I went through purple, blue, green, orange. So I only have various shades of red to go and then I'm, back around to the beginning. Yeah, there we go. There's a lot of purple up here and I'm helping it out by breaking it up with some very fuzzy areas of orange. Oh, that was a good call right there. That was a that was a good that was a good stroke right there. Very subtle, uh, but definitely helps. All right, I'm going to go now around to red. So, I'll, without cleaning my brushes, I'm picking up Scarlet Lake, which is a very orange-ish red, of course. So it's a very warm. And I actually added a tiny bit of white to that. 
and a tiny bit of yellow. So now it's very warm red. Now this, what I'm doing right now is not broken color. It's, <laughs> but it just dawned on me that I would like that part of that sign and part of this sign to be a little more intense. Not much, just a little bit. So I hope, I, I, I think I'm going to finish this phase today. That means tomorrow, hopefully it will be the last day on this painting. And um, it, that what will be on tap for tomorrow will be first glazing anything and then just, then just punch list. If with fresh eyes, I come and look at it and say, oh, I wish this was more that or this or that or this or that and thus and so. That's all I need to do tomorrow, but I'll be looking at glazes in particular. Okay, so now I have red. Oh, I should have done more of this. I should have been up here coloring more of these dark branches uh, with different colors. So that, that's the kind of thing I'm, I might do tomorrow. Let me get up on, a, on my high horse <laughs> and, and do some of this up here. Am I on? Yeah. All these, all these dark lines, uh, there's already some color in them. They're not just pure dark. There's green, purple, blue, but adding this red is really adding a nice little punch to what's already there. And here I'm, I'm just coming in and arbitrarily adding some red to this wall. Arbitrary. Does that make sense? So the that's a good word for the broken color phase. It, it's an arbitrary thing. It's not, it's made up. It's not, does not grow out of like logic, uh, realism. Some red way back here would be kind of nice, I think. Now I'm going to do some that may be broken color, may be broken value. I'm not sure which, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to do it because I know from previous experience, it's probably going to look pretty good. And that is, um, I'm doing a tiny bit of outlining in red as if, as if I started the painting, um, with a toned red canvas and there's little bits of red peeking through. So I'm getting, I'm getting a little bit punchy here. Again, this is not, this is not technically broken color when I, if it's contrasty, this is, this is beyond that. Um, I am finding that, um, well, every color looks good, of course, but maybe I'm partial to the, to the little bits of, red showing up in a lot of places, especially in this painting. That red is a very important um, there, this good broken color, broken value right there, broken color right there. Now he really does look like a mailman because he's got a red stripe, but I'm going to, I just broke it up a little bit. I'm going to leave it. Um, I, I find that uh, little bits of red. Oh, no, I was saying that in this painting in particular, red is a very important um, secondary color. I mean, the, the painting is mostly warm and cool, orange and blue, but next in line would be red because it just, it just pops up. That's why when I turned this man's coat into red with my last sketch, it, it made a lot of progress. I'm just about done with this warm red, then I'm going to go to cool red, and then I'll be done, theoretically, with the... All of a sudden, I just saw that this sign up here, here's a great place for some broken color. Um, and again, this, this little trick, if you will, of, of an outline, or even a faux outline, fake outline, it's, it almost looks like I, it's part of the 
original drawing was done in red, but it's not. As you can see, it's actually very late in the process. I'm bringing red into the picture in a ra rather arbitrary manner. Now, a little bit of red way up here. This is, under, in fact, acrylic underpainting. Uh, residual leftover little bits of, of red from early on. All right, now let's go down here to the bottom. Definitely, definitely, definitely need some red down here. Where? I haven't got a clue. That's not my job to predict. It's my job to just do it with my... I'm thinking to mix a little bit of uh, cool red in with this already. Oh, but I'm going to mix in a little bit of white as well. So I have quite a, quite a zinger shade of red on my brushes right now. Let's find, find, no, it's too dark for that. Good, I just put red shoes on this guy. No, I, I like it too much of a good thing though. So let's remove some of that, what I just put on. Yeah, a little red glow I like just fine. Ooh, that was nice. That was a, there's classic broken color right there. Um, let me, let me zoom in so you, so you can see that. Okay. It's this line that I put right there. See, that is, that's a good example, in my opinion, of broken color because it matches the value. It's a little bit too regular, so I'm just breaking it up a little bit. It matches the, the value of what's already there, but definitely a contrasting color. There we go. That was a bold stroke, and it turned out nice. Ah, oh, Lord, help me to be braver. That is what I need to be. I need to be brave, more brave in my painting. Oh, that was some nice stuff. All of that that I just did down here. All of it red. Oh my goodness. Tiny little bits, but what a difference it is making in the painting. And they don't have to be hard edges. They can be soft. That mark's not so pleasant, either, but that, that one in there is okay. Wow. That makes me happy. A little bit of a little blush of red here. Um, up here in this guy's bench. <laughs> ah, here on the asphalt, a little bit glow, a little bit of red. Same thing. That's nice. I, I hope you don't get tired of me saying, "Ooh, that's nice." Understand that is not that is not me boasting or bragging. That is me responding. That's the pure childlike part of my psyche responding to the going, oh, that was, you know, it's more like, oh, that was lucky. Do you understand? I just know enough to be dangerous. Um, all right, theoretically, I'm done. I stand now and look at this painting. I don't know, hold on, 30 minutes I've been doing this, maybe more. And the, the improvement in the painting is, uh, is palpable. I, I just, you just feel it. I don't know, and I don't know how well, it, I'm sure you guys aren't getting the, anywhere near the full impact of it. Um, you know, paintings look so much, but I will certainly post this uh, on my, but I, I won't, it won't be done until tomorrow. Um, I will certainly post the finished painting on YouTube community. Again, I, I, I find that that's a, Helpful, but something about YouTube that many people don't know about. Um, if you go to my channel, so right, so it's my picture at the top in the round circle, and it has home videos, playlists, maybe the next word, I'm not sure, is community. Um, and basically what that means is anything that I want to post to you guys that it's not a video and in my case it's almost always finished artwork sometimes by the way it's a and a teaching outline so i'll make reference to that and uh of course don't just look at my community um 
you know, the goal is, oh, wait a minute, we can all get better at this. There's this thing called community on on YouTube. Um, because now I started looking at other people's community and I discovered that some uh, broadcasters don't even know about community yet because they don't know it at all. Okay, I as I was thinking, I was wrapping up, I realized my eye just caught, oh, wait a minute, there's this big, dark, black sort of outline on this one-way sign, and I could mix up some dark blue. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh my goodness, is that an improvement? So I've got, I've got some other ideas for blue here. By the way, one of my favorite blue colors um, of all time is when you mix phthalo blue with dioxazine purple or violet, dioxazine violet. Mix because it's you're mixing a uh, warm blue phthalo with a very cool blue purple. Did I say that right? Yes. And and you get just a really intense, lovely color. In fact. Here's another good, here's a good excuse for some broken color right there. Oh man. So, and of course I could do this tomorrow uh, because there's, there's really, not, there's no limit to the amount of broken color. I guess if you just started going crazy and got too much of it, that would be bad. But I am, I don't think I'm at that point yet. I'm not on the verge of, I am not on the verge of too much broken color. Um, but I finished, the, I went around the color wheel, and that's just one way to do it. Arguably, it's even a goofy way to do it, to, to arbitrarily go around the color wheel. Um, I can imagine that in years to come, if I'm a better artist, I might look back at this season and say, oh man, I remember when I used to go around the color wheel, that was so dumb. Well, maybe I'll be nice to myself, I don't know. But I can imagine that, but until I'm, until I'm better than that, I'm not better than that, so this is what I'm doing, I just, uh, helps keep me organized. You can tell I'm a little bit of a OC personality, obsessive compulsive personality, given to given to order, if you will. I'm going to go uh, back up to the tree now. These branches with this lovely, quite intense blue. On my brushes and looking for places where there are black or dark branches, any dark spot that I could hit with a bit of color. So what the painting is doing now, one of my favorite words is it, in the color realm, the whole painting, oh, here's a good place for some blue right over here. Oh man. And again, I can I can imagine being a I can imagine being a more mature painter at some point in the future and, and looking at some of this and going, oh, I was so immature. I hope I get to that point, honestly. But I'm not at that point now. So this is the best I can do. So I'm gonna do the best I can do. Do you hear my encouragement there? Um But I was going to say after the broken color phase. Oh my, that was some good stuff up there. When I look at the, the painting now, let me adjust my light here. I have very nice lighting here, by the way. Um, color corrected, um, LED, adjustable, adjustable color, adjustable intensity, and uh, bottom at B&H photo. Um, very nice for, for painting with. Um, when I stand back now and look look at the painting, uh, there's a, a absolute dance, vibration, happy dance that is happening on the, uh, all over the canvas. Uh, it doesn't feel corny. Now, at some point, as I said, when I'm a better artist in the future, I might go, oh, that was so corny. And okay, I hope I, I hope I do get to that point. I hope I graduate to something better. But at the moment, let me stand back and look at it. Um, there's just a dance, a, sh a shimmer, uh, a sparkle, 
on the painting that was not there just half an hour ago. And yeah, that makes me happy. I seem to be coming, I seem to be coming around for seconds now. <laughs> and perhaps I'm a little bit bolder. I'm, I'm now realizing, oh wait, there was a lot of room for blue in there that I didn't really take advantage of. I'm gonna mix up a slightly lighter blue right now. was nice. Dang. I need to be braver, y'all. I need I, I can get so much bolder. And again, the difference between me and most of my students is I'm brave. Uh, but the difference between me and the future me is the same thing, bravery. I just need to be gutsier than I am. Whew. And everybody knows, everybody tries to paint no easier said than done <laughs> i know that even when i'm doing that on my students canvases i say the difference between you and me is i'm braver but even as i say that i know easier said than done for the student but all right i i fear now i'm i'm just fiddling and driving some of you crazy by my fiddling um this is a good example though this whole this whole phase of the of the painting process please understand that everything i've done in the last no almost everything not everything almost everything i've done in the last uh, 30 40 minutes whatever it's been um has not been toward similitude but has been away from realism okay so that helps again helps answer the question well if you're spending more and more time on on a painting doesn't that mean it's going to be more and more realistic and not the i hope the answer is obvious to that the answer is no because the last the last 40 minutes i just spent were not in a direction of realism it was in a direction of in visual interest not to be confused with realism or tightness right many of the marks that i put down have been just in, and I'm coming back and making some of them even looser than they were. Many of the marks I've put down have been distinctly loose. Messy marks. All right. Oh, I know. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hang up now. I'm going to do a little bit of blue uh, down here at the bottom. Maybe I'll keep broadcasting. Sorry, I was, I was going to hang up on you. This is what I forgot to do down here earlier. I didn't, I didn't think about the, this part of the painting when I was doing blue. So there should be some good places for blue down here because the whole painting down here is quite decidedly um, orange brown, right? Other, other opposite of the end of the color wheel, which means there's good, good opportunity for broken color. Yeah. At what point does it get corny? <laughs> the answer is when it's too late. <laughs> After you've made the mark, and too many marks, and then you go, oh, darn, it was too corny. Now, hopefully, if you catch it, you know, in oils, catch it within the hour, you can wipe it off with a rag. Um, but I don't think I'm getting corny yet. I don't think so. Again, see, an over concern for cautiousness, uh, conservatism leads to uh, stiff painting. Painting usually is a result of some, some kind of courage. That's the word of the day. Be brave. <laughs> Wow. All right, let me see what kind of chats you guys have made. And then I'll wrap it up and pack up and get over to Jerry's where I'll be teaching, teaching a class and hope it, hope it works well.
Lots of good comments. Then I keep having to back up. I'm not there. Creative Color and Daniel Danielle B. Thank you, girls. Nancy Smith, we want to take a walk on that street. Good. That's a good word. Um, am I aimed? Am I big? Yeah, I am. Okay. Uh, Dave Lappin. Is this for a client? No, it's not. Um, this is, I'm thinking, the first of my 4G paintings, generation, fourth generation paintings. Um, new era in my paintings, and I just picked it because I like the photograph. Not the bit, not the wisest business decision. <laughs> it was an art, the artistic side of me took over. Um, although, of course, I want to sell it. Um, Eight thousand dollars, in case you're interested. Um, Nicholas, thank you for the encouragement. Susan, red, your surprise color. Yes, spice. That's exactly that's a good word for it. Spice. And did I explain uh, creative girl color? Did I explain broken color? Um, I've explained it many times. Did I, did I explain it after you asked your question? I, I hope that I did. Uh, equal, equal value, lightness, dark, lightness, darkness. Equal on the color, on the value spectrum, um, different. That, now, that's a little bit of broken value right there because it's light, borderline. All right, let's see what else. Um, Dan is in his happy zone. Yes, you are correct, Susan. <laughs> Um, and David says, don't, you don't find that the road is too much goldish. It's possible, David. No, I, I, I don't think so. I don't think so here just for fun. That's a very good question. I will look at it with fresh eyes tomorrow. Now, of course, I'm not copying the photograph, but if you look at the photograph, the road down here, uh, the sidewalk is brown and the road is brown, decidedly brown. Uh, so I'm not looking in the, again, I'm not copying that, but I'm sure it's influencing me. I'm not looking at gray asphalt, which is a little bit unusual. No, I think I like that. I think I like it that color. I'll look again tomorrow, David. Thanks for mentioning it. Um, Elvis looks like he's wearing a worker man vest. Very possible. <laughs> Very possible. Susan has a question. I have a question. The other day, on a close-up, there's a blackish square. Yeah, bl blackish square looking frame above the no parking sign. Um, oh yeah, right right here. Yeah, it's a sign. There's a sign back there. I've touched it up probably since you asked the question. Um, it's one of these signs that comes out from, from, the, from the wall. So it's straight out. You know, the, the building is going back like this, but this sign comes out and this sign comes out. Um, if I'll look at that tomorrow. If it looks confusing, I might fix it up. <laughs> want to see immature paintings look at my paintings <laughs> bless you uh david my friend david says since he cut his ponytail <laughs> it's exactly right <laughs> kind of like samson huh? i lost my cut my hair and i lost it all <laughs> i would still wear a ponytail if i could support it but me and my hairdresser and my wife decided to give up. I really liked having a ponytail. It was the real me. It really was. Um, but that's all right. I'm 65, so okay. old enough to grow up. <laughs> uh, yep, I'll do that. I'll take a picture and look at it in Photoshop. Good, Michael. Glad to be of encouragement. Okay, I see it looks like an empty sign holder. Oh, it looks like we're seeing through it. Good word, Susan. I'm, I'll check on that tomorrow um i'm just i am totally out of time now but thank you guys it's been great fun and it's cold out of here but i'm doing quite well thank you very much i'm going to pack up if i can broadcast tonight's painting is um the magic of landscape painting the secret sauce of landscape painting so i will certainly broadcast that if i can so yes i'm at the moment quite happy with this fresh eyes tomorrow maybe some glazing here and there Otherwise, I'm done and I'll sign it. Woohoo!